So, a fair while ago, probably a couple of years ago now, we all got the news that there was going to be a live action adaptation of The Last Airbender in the works at Netflix. And at the time, that got everybody a little bit on edge. Because, well, I think the OG film that they made, the terrible live action film, it speaks for itself. And nobody wants to see something of that calibre ever return to the screen to disgrace the franchise again. And I do think people kind of expected more of the same, especially once it was announced that the original creators had left the project due to creative differences. So that didn't sound good at all. It sounded like it was going to be a massive bust. And then we got the first trailer, and it was so much better than I expected. So much better than I think most people had anticipated. And this started building up my hype for the release of the first season, which is going to come out towards the end of February. And then this hype exploded once again with the release of yet another trailer recently, which also just looks really, really good. Man, the signs are all here. I think this thing has so much potential. It's going to explode in popularity. Please, please, please be good. Please. I think it actually might break my heart if this thing sucks. Like, well and truly break me as a man. But enough about that. The trailer's a banger, so obviously we're going to break this bad boy down, so let's get to it, shall we? Okay, so I gotta say for starters, before we actually get too far into the trailer and the content and the story, the effects, at times they do have this look about them, and I'm not talking about all of the effects and all of the CGI, just some of it looks a little bit... Uh, not cheap, but also not great. Feels a bit inconsistent in quality in some areas. Not sure about the fire animation, especially in some of the shots. But you know what? I think some of that is just pure nitpicking. And it doesn't necessarily look so bad, especially considering how much money it probably took to accomplish even this passable standard. I mean, pretty much every single episode of this show is going to be overflowing with CGI, and since Netflix isn't exactly known for robust budgets, I think this is something I'm just going to have to accept. And as long as the writing and the acting's good, I think... Uh, I'll just accept it and I'll move on. But yeah, let's check out the trailer properly, shall we? Okay, so we start off with a look at Fire Nation ships sailing through icy waters as a voice narrates over the top of it. And I'm guessing, at first, I was guessing the voice belongs to Iroh. Just judging by the initial context of what he's saying and what we're looking at, but yeah, nah. I was wrong about that, we'll get to that later. Moving on, we hear that the Fire Nation's embarking on a dark path, and given that this was positioned, these shots, at the start of the trailer, my brain instantly made that connection that this must be the opening episode where Zuko's hunting the Avatar in the South Pole. Then on closer inspection, I'm thinking this is actually just Zhao's war fleet attacking the North Pole, because there's so many ships, and it's hard to think that Zuko, in disgraced exile, would have access to so much stuff and such a nice ship. Unlikely. We then have a look at Appa and Team Avatar flying over what seems to be the scorched forest that Hei buys the Guardian Spirit of, and yeah, while some of the CGI for me doesn't hit right, I feel like no matter what, these sorts of grand, epic nature shots... They always look so good. And with Oppa flying out there, so fluffy, so cute. Oh, they really just captured the vibe from the show perfectly. But they also turned it up a notch, made it more epic. Man. Next up, we take a look at the attack on the Air Temple by the Fire Nation at the outset of the Hundred Years War. Really hyped to see this battle. We get to see all the other benders fight as a group, as a team. But Aang was always the only airbender in the OG series, so it's going to be nice to see a lot of masters working together to try to fend them off. It's going to be great. Sad, but great. I wonder if they'll do it as a flashback for when they arrive at the Air Temple, or if they show the battle and the lead up to the battle as sort of a prologue type of deal. You just see the happy monks going about their day, and then suddenly... <sighs> Fire Nation. And then when we actually get to the episode where they talk about how Aang ran away and his memories in the temple, you don't need the fighting then. I guess we'll see though. Also, is this dude, this old guy, is he fighting Gyatso? If so, I hope Gyatso goes out like the Chad that he seemed to be from the show. I mean, just look at those goons. He already took them all down. Beast. I hope they do him justice. And this old guy, his gear seems to be a bit different than the rest. He seems a bit more special. He's getting a close up. Is he going to be anybody? Is this Sozin? I think that would be pretty cool. And then the narration that I initially thought was Iroh earlier on, it's actually probably Gyatso. Makes more sense now because he's talking to Aang. And in fact, is this a line that was lifted directly out of the OG show? Pretty close to it, maybe. We then have a look at the awakening of Aang from the iceberg, which, yeah, looks suitably epic. <sighs> you just know this moment's going to be so hype when it plays out. And of course, that'll be the point where the episode ends. You can go to credits. But luckily, this is not Disney+. Plus. This is Netflix, son, so we get to keep binging. You're not stuck around waiting for a whole nother week to see the next scene. Oh, and then the music cuts in. Yes! I hope we see a lot of the old theme songs come back. 
and it won't be this season, but my soul, my soul is ready for Tales of Ba Sing Se. Little soldier boy. Ah, oh, classic. Then we take a look at some Fire Nation. And is this the Fire Nation capital we're seeing here? Looks cool. We then see Ozai, who looks like he's just jumped straight out of the animation and become a real person. I'm really excited to see what he's like. And I really like that they seem to be featuring him a lot more. In the OG, you don't see him often until like the end game of the franchise, and yet he's supposed to be the main villain, who's really responsible for the existence of every other major villain in the show doing what they do. First Zuko, and then Azula. And so, I think showing him is something they need to do early on, to set these things up properly. We see... I suspect this is Azula. It looks pretty much how I'd expect she'd look, like the exact same design. Wonder how involved she's going to be in the first season. In the cartoon, she appears in small fragments in book one. You see her in the background of flashbacks like when Zuko gets burned in the Agni Kai, and then at the end when Ozai sends her out to hunt Iroh and Zuko down for their treachery and betraying Xiao at the North Pole. Are they going to have that there? Is she going to join the story earlier, or maybe they're just going to have her appear straight up in the North Pole, or in the Earth Kingdom at some point? Guess I'll have to wait and see. We then see some explosions in a town. I'm honestly drawing a blank as to what town that is. Maybe the one where they kidnap the Earthbenders? Who knows? But then Zuko's attacking some Earthbenders on a road, and I suspect this is the one where Iroh falls asleep in the hot springs and gets kidnapped by the Earthbenders. We see Team Avatar walking through the ruined air temples, which... Yeah, for me, this CGI ain't it. To me, it very much looks like three kids walking entirely in front of dodgy green screen. We then get a look at the Water Tribe siblings, and my god, they really have managed to capture, well, both of their looks, but especially Katara. If nothing else, this show has gone hard in trying to translate the appearances of the characters from the cartoon to live action accurately and in ways that make sense. Done really well here. We see the gang flying into Kiyoshi Island. Pretty sure this is Kiyoshi Island. I mean, you can see the statue down there, right? They then include Aang's crash and burn on the air scooter, which, hell yeah. I love that they're trying to adapt some of that slapstick humor that you see in the cartoon. I think that kind of thing is always hard to accomplish, as the cartoons simply have more ability to show off weird and wacky facial expressions and can make the bodies of the characters do things that a normal person can't. But I'm happy to see that they're still trying to make it work. I like it. We then get some soccer sarcasm as he eats, and I'm very optimistic about this guy. I know he got some flack when he was cast, but they chose him for a reason. So I'm very, very optimistic, and he looks like he's doing well, especially after seeing this. We then see a lone ship sailing through ice, and this ship is far less grand than we saw in the first scene, and also is all alone. So this is definitely the opening with Zuko searching for the South Pole. And here... We get some more Zuko scenes, some more Zuko moments. We get a look at the Fire Nation helmets, which to me felt very Star Wars here. Like, I know that it sort of looks that way in the cartoon, but here, it really gives off vibes of a galaxy far, far away. And I'm not sure I like it. Also, when they're beating their spears on the ground, I can only think of that terrible scene from the movie. You know the one. <laughs> oh... How did that make the cut? Moving on, we get a closer look at Zuko as he talks about how it's his destiny to find the Avatar, and him and Iroh squaring off with the Earthbenders, like I mentioned earlier. And I noticed in these scenes that Zuko's scar is not very gnarly. It's just red skin. And I mean, I know why they'd go for it like that, but I do think it openly lessens Ozai's cruelty in a visual sense. I'm not saying I wanted the guy to be hugely mangled, but I don't know. I feel like a bit more than face paint would be nice. Especially since the very next scene we see is absolute Chad Ozai. I mean, look at this guy. Look at the size of him. My goodness. And on top of that, he just oozes this visual charisma. So intimidating. He's got the big boss vibes. And yeah, he's fighting Zuko in their Agni Kai, I'm pretty sure. And look at the size of his flames. And this brings me back to my earlier point. Because he only gets that tiny little discoloration on his face? Nah. Also, I like that Zuko seems to at least be trying to protect himself here. It makes sense for him not to attack his dad, I get it, but trying in vain to protect himself only to get utterly outclassed would make more sense to the story, and on top of that sets Ozai up as a super strong and skilled combatant, and also super cruel, because he's just toying with his son, toying with him before he permanently scars him for life. Yikes. We then have poor little Aang talking about how he can't stop the Fire Nation alone, and how he doesn't want that responsibility. And it looked almost like he's crying here, and then he's snuggling Oppa, Man, I cannot wait for Oppa in all his glory with his cute personality. So I'm thinking this is going to be a flashback to when he runs away from the air temple after being told he's the last hope for the world. Oppa looks really cute, by the way. I just, I had to keep saying it. So does Momo. Jeez, look at him. Love it. 
We then have a cute team bonding moment. God, the chemistry here looks like it's going to be good. Although I can't get over how young Aang looks compared to literally everybody else in the team. My God, are they really going to go through with the romance angle here? I don't know. It's such a key part of the story and the characters, but at the same time, ick. I'm getting the ick looking at this. Maybe in a couple years it won't be so bad, but right now, nah. Don't even hint at that shit. I'm begging you. We then see June and her beastie. Ugh, that nose, that tongue. Creepy. Also, June. Man. It's like the perfect casting, perfect design, whatever you want to call it. They've done such a good job at making the world and the characters have that nostalgic feel. They look exactly like they do in the cartoon, whilst also just looking normal in a live action scenario. We then see Haibai, who looks really, really cool, like Venom crossed with the crazy no face from Spirited Away. I honestly expected that of all the CGI characters, this one would probably be the one that looks like garbage. But I'm actually pleasantly surprised here. Then we just get a pretty cool compilation of scenes. We see the Kyoshi village and the attack by the Fire Nation with them fighting the warriors. And it was cool to see how the non-benders have adapted fighting styles to be able to contend with benders. Like we see with Suki and Sokka fighting this guy and then this guy. Like come on, Suki straight up blocks a fireball or at least redirects it. That's badass. We then see, I think it's Omashu. Is this going to be young Boomy having invented a flying machine to play with Aang in a flashback? At first I thought maybe it's the Northern Air Temple, but it feels way too big and not ruined, you get me? It also has that big shoot system that Omashu's famous for. We then see the tunnel episode, I think, maybe. And then the blue demon fighting goons with Aang. Hell yeah, that mask is looking good. And finally we get some big time airbending, although I gotta say, a fall from this height off the bridge onto that concrete down there, potentially head first, ouch. Aang is straight up killing people it seems. And yeah, we get some cool Aang moments here, because I'll be honest, they were lacking that. They need to show him off. He's the main character after all. And so, to make up for that, it seems like they've backloaded the trailer with clips of Aang whooping Fire Nation ass. And I'm all here for that. He whoops him on Zuko's ship. Then again in the South Pole Village. We see Aang and Sokka double team a dude in the forest. We see Boomy versus Aang. Katara versus Zuko, which looks pretty awesome. And I'm guessing this is when Zuko arrives to try to take Aang hostage when he's in the spirit world in the North Pole. We then see Jet, who looks, well, once again, pretty awesome, not gonna lie. I'm curious to see how that storyline plays out. We see Zuko and Aang for the first time ever clash in the South Pole. Then we see the Avatar state and how Aang's tattoos light up. And I love that the little pattern on them lights up first before it all fills out with the light. Yep, my god, the hype is real. I have all the hype now. I need this show. It's gonna be great. Please be good. Please. How am I supposed to wait another month for this to come out? My god. And so yeah, that's the end of the trailer, and these have just been my opinions, and I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the trailer? You like it, hate it? Do you think the show is going to be good? Maybe not. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know!